Hello Crafty Llamas! In this video I'll be showing you how to Tunisian crochet a standard square dishcloth. So for this I have got my Likey Driftwood Tunisian set here. Um, I'm going to be using um, two strands of double knit yarn in a pale grey and a pale pink. So I'm going to be using a four and a half mil crochet hook. I'm also going to be using a short Nike cable, so I'm just going to grab that. So I've got my Tunisian crochet hook, a short cable and then a stopper. I don't know why I got two out, I don't need to. So I'm just going to assemble this. Okay, so I have now got my Tunisian crochet hook here with my cable and a stopper just in case. And so, I, like I said, I've got two colours of um, double knit cotton yarn. So I've just got a nice pale pink and a pale grey. The actual colourways are ballet pink and misty grey. And then I've got obviously my pair of embroidery scissors for later on and um, just some darning needles as well that I'll be using later on. So there isn't a pattern to this, I'm just going to show you kind of the basics of Tunisian crochet in terms of this and how to do a quick dishcloth. So you can either use your outside or your inside strand of yarn, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to pick whichever ones I can get first. And like anything, Tunisian crochet starts with a slip stitch. There we are. Right. And I'm just going to pop that on my hook. And so you literally chain as many as you want your crochet to be in width. So I'm going to start by chaining 30 and see what sort of length that would give me. So I apologise in advance for the rattling of the um, cable. It's one of the most annoying things I have uh, found yet to do with Tunisian crochet. But unfortunately, it's just one of those. Three, four, six, and ten. So I've just single. I've just chained thirty, and that just means that my coat, my dishcloth will be thirty stitches across. And as you can see, it'll be approximately that big. Right. So, to um, what differs with Tunisian crochet versus your kind of more standard crochet is at this point we're now rather than going through just kind of one of the loops, we're going to go through the back bump. And you're going to start with your the back bump second to your hook. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit for this and just make sure that you can see me a little bit better. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just turned my chain like so, so that you can see the back humps a little bit better. So I'm just going to pop my crochet hook through the back hump, yarn over and pull it through. Obviously, if you're used to doing kind of more regular crochet, you would then yarn over and pull through again. But with Tunisian crochet, you want to keep the hooks or the loops on your on your crochet hook, which is why you have the cable. And you're just going to carry on doing that all the way down until you've got 30 loops on your hook. So you're going to go in the next one, yarn over and pull through, and you're just going to keep going. And by going through the back humps of the stitches, you're basically just going to have that um, nice V stitch. If I just flip over there, that is going to be your bottom edge. And obviously, that's the nice V stitch that we've got there. And like I said, just carry on going down. Doing your yarn over and pull three. So obviously if you've done more or fewer stitches, then it's just exactly the same. 
Right, so I've just finished going through the back humps of all of the stitches. Um, so the next stage is the return pass. So this is where it varies in knitting and crochet. So obviously up until now, what you've got is you have done your chain, which is the same, and then you've kept all of the loops on your hook. For the return pass in Tunisia and crochet, um, this is kind of where it becomes a bit of a knit mixture of kind of knitting and crochet together. So you're going to want to start by chaining one. So I've, I'm just going to yarn over and pull through that first loop on my hook like so. And that will give you the height of your return pass. Next what you're going to do is you're going to yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook. So that's one and two like so. And you're just gonna carry on yarning over and pulling through two loops for the rest of the return pass. So you yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, 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 pull through two. And you carry on going all the way down your row. Yarn over, pull through two. Like, oh, so. Can't delete that. It's a problem with working with a double strand. Okay, and so I've just got to the last two loops, so you're gonna yarn over and pull three. So at the end of your first return, you're always going to, or on your return, you're always going to have one loop left on your crochet hook at all times. If you haven't got that, something's gone wrong. So the next stage is um, to obviously go back along this row. And this is gonna vary differently from the last time we did it, because obviously last time we went through the back loop. Now we're gonna pick up the front legs of these stitches. So I'll show you what I mean in a second. And another thing that varies with Tunisian crochet is that you never turn your work. So when you're crocheting or knitting, then you will turn your work and you will work on the right side or the wrong side. That never changes for Tunisia and crochet, so you're always going to have the right side facing you. So you're always going to know exactly what it's going to look like when you're done. There's no kind of flip flopping around. Okay. Right, so here is my first one, and so let's bring this up and let this focus. Um, so essentially, what you've got up your side, up the side here is you've got your V. Um, and that will stay. If you are finding that your V's are a little bit loose, just keep this, this loop nice and tight. So the next thing that I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm gonna go past and um, I'm gonna crochet into the front loop of all of these stitches. So what that means is across here, you've got these vertical bars that kind of rise up. That's what I mean. So you're gonna pick up every single one of those across there and you should have however many you had loops at the end the same number as you did at the end of your last one so when I first started Tunisian crocheting which isn't that long ago I found that my stitch count would be up and down pretty much constantly and that I was really struggling to keep the right number of stitches on my hook and somehow it just kept decreasing and I just I kept missing the very first stitch because it's quite close to that first to the one that's already on your hook so I kept missing that so just keep an eye out and just double check your stitch counts at the end of each row if you are finding that you're decreasing have a look and just kind of 
follow the stitches upwards and see where you're missing them. So as I said, all you're going to do is you're going to pick up that loop, yarn over and pull it through and you're just going to keep doing that until you get to the end and I'll show you what to do with the very last stitch to keep it a nice tidy edge. I'm still trying to figure out personally the best way for me to hold a Tunisian crochet hook. Everyone can kind of do it slightly differently and it's very different from how I'd usually hold my crochet hook which is I think why I find it a little bit more uncomfortable to Tunisian crochet than it is kind of regular crochet for me. Um, and it's just because it's just a very different way to hold the hook and especially on my kind of return pass I find it a bit awkward because I've got all these stitches on the hook I find it a little bit uncomfortable to be honest but I just I really like the way the fabric comes out so it's I'm trying to get used to it like I said it's all quite new to me so if anyone does have any tips for someone quite new to Tunisian and crochet then yeah feel free to pop them below send me a message I'm always looking for some tips okay so I always feel like the last stitch can be a little bit hard to find and that's because it does really it's not quite as distinct as the rest um, and so what I'm going to so this is a tip that I picked up from Tony of TL Yarn Crafts she's an absolutely amazing crocheter Tunisian crochet basically all kinds of crochet and she's absolutely fabulous love her to bits um, and so what you're going to do is you're going to turn this just a little bit and you're going to go through both loops of your stitch at the end. So I'll zoom in in a sec so I can show you. I always use my, my nail to do this because I find it's a little bit of a snug fit. And then you're just going to do what you did last time which is yarn over and pull through. So let me just zoom in and show you what I mean by that. Okay, so here we have it. and. Normally, if you're going, if you're not too bothered, um, then you can just go through this last stitch here, just right at the end, like so. But if you want a particularly neat edge, so if you turn the end of your fabric towards yourself, you'll be able to better see the stitch as a whole. So I'm just going to pick up that bit. This is the front leg and then the back leg of the stitch as well. Pop my hook through there, yarn over and pull that three. I don't want to pull too tightly because this is something that I also do is that tension on the last stitch I always find is really, really tight when I do it. So I just try to keep that a little bit looser. looser. It's one of those things I've got to do quite consciously. So the return pass is exactly the same this time as it was last time. So you've got your, for me, 31. So I'm just gonna double check that, make sure I've still got 31. Because like I said, mine have a habit of going up and down like no cheese business. Yep, still got 31, perfect. So, and then just yarn over and pull through one. So that's my chain to get the right height. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through two for the rest of the return pass. So you're just going to carry on doing your yarn over and pull through two all the way down like so. Right so that is the end of my return pass of the second row and basically I'm just going to carry on doing that so I'm going to carry on going through the front loops picking those up and then doing my return pass um, until I have the size that I want. So ideally I want it to be square, so I'm just gonna carry on until it's the same height as it is width. So I will come back in a little while once I have done a few more rows so we can have a look to see how it's coming together. So I've got my dishcloth to just about the height that one. I'm gonna do one more row across and one return pass and then I'm gonna show you how to cast off. So your last row will be exactly the same as it usually is. You just pick up your stitches, So 
So I'm just gonna show you how to cast off your Tunisian crochet. And obviously, if you're familiar with knitting or crochet, you'd think because you've only got one loop on your hook that that's kind of it, that's your finished edge. But to create the V effect that you've got down the sides and along the bottom, if you have a look at your work piece here, um, there's just one more thing that you need to do. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And so it's very similar to your normal pass, except you're not collecting the hooks, uh, the loops on your hook. What you're going to do is you're going to pick up that loop, yarn over, pull through and pull through again. So you're only ever going to have one loop on your hook. That's needlessly tricky. And just make sure you do that all the way along. So you're gonna pick up, yarn over, through and then through again. And as you can see, it's only starting to form that nice little edge. I'll zoom in once I've got a few more for you. So you're gonna go in, pull through, and then pull through again. And you're just gonna do that all the way along, right to the end. And then that is how you finish off your Tunisian crochet project. This is your kind of very basic cast off. Um, this also allows you to pop a border on your work if you choose to. It's nice and simple and it also just looks really, really neat and tidy. So as you can see here, we've kind of got these really nice V-stitches along the top now, whereas before what we had were these kind of bobbly bits with the kind of slanted stitches. So it just gives you that really nice finished V effect all the way around your work. So just carry on to the end. So that's it. So all you've got to do is then you just cut your yarn. There we go. And you can either yarn, or yarn over and pull through to kind of create a nice loop and a nice look, knot. There we go. And there you have it, like so. So here you can see you've got these lovely V stitches literally all the way around your work, including the bottom edge. And if you've picked up both sides of the stitch, you've also got it along your kind of the end of your row. So as you'll notice, if I let go of my piece, it does roll. That's completely normal for Tunisian crochet. It's very partial to rolling on itself. And that's not an issue with tension or anything like that. That's just the way Tunisian crochet works. So with a lot of Tunisian crochet, you will have to block. Um, if you're not familiar with blocking, that's the process of pinning your finished piece into the shape that you would like using um, blocking pins and then a blocking mat. You can also use things like your kids' play mat, um, like the jigsaw play mat things that you get. You can get them normally quite cheap. And then pins, just you can get a set of blocking pins online, um, depending on kind of how much space you've got in your house and what your budget is. There's a lot of different options. Um, I am not going to block it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew in the ends and because it's a dishcloth I'm not too fussed about the finished size so I'm not actually going to bother with blocking. Right so I'm just going to sew in my ends. So another way to prevent your work from curling is when you're sewing in your ends, if you go against the way of the curl, so obviously you can see the curl is going this way. So if I then, so if you see it goes that way, if I then sew in my ends in this direction, it'll help prevent the way the curl from happening. So it really does depend on how fussed you are about the way that it's curling. And if you don't like it, then you can always sew in your ends in the opposite direction. For example here I've just pulled that nice and tight and you can see that side now isn't curling whereas the other side is. So what you can do is you can attach yarn and just help to thread the yarn up the opposite way and just pull it nice and taut and that will help prevent the curling of your fabric. But like I said it's completely dependent on you if that's what you would like to do. Okay. Here we are. So that's it for my finished simple stitch Tunisian dishcloth. If you've enjoyed this video, please do let me know by commenting below and liking it. We do have weekly videos, so please do subscribe to my channel. Our social media handle is Crafty Llama UK, so you can find us on various platforms using that. 
Please tag us if you do attempt anything in this video and of course you can purchase all of the tools that I've used in today's video on our shop which I will link below. That's it for this week's video but I'll be back with you next week for another one. Bye!